Happy New Year. We all have a blast on New Year's Eve. Yay, Happy New Year. The gang's all here. This is how you go crazy. Am I going crazy? Yeah, I'm also gonna take off this hat. I look like a Freddy Krueger became a hipster or whatever. So this is how it's gonna go. Even though it says best movies, I'm gonna have dishonorable mentions and honorable mentions. There'll just be some quick mentions. Some of the dishonorable mentions have like the same like like mentions of them because two of them like two of two, and one of them is just bad. And then with the honorable mentions, I'm just gonna say something quick about them, like nice. And then I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail about my top ten. That's how it's gonna go. Also, according to my movie going experience, I have seen 28 movies actually this year, more than last year, which is like 25, at least three more. I think I'm going insane with movies. Also, for the last three years, I've been for top ten. My backdrop has been my toy shelf. So I just thought this doing this like sitting down with behind the green screen. I like it more just sitting down. I maybe I should just do this more often with also my, my reviews probably because I have to set everything up like because this is because my my shelf is behind the my this camera actually so this is on my bed. Uh, I could do this more like sitting down like this more instead of having like setting up on like I have to move my bed I have to push it back a little bit more, or fold it, and then you'll see that. So I'm thinking about doing something different this year probably. Something more relaxable, or maybe I'll still do the same or whatever. It all depends. And another thing, I can use my giant monitor that I have that I connect to my laptop. I can put a notepad on it and read from there instead of using my book notes or whatever, writing it down. Or I can still do that, or do both, or whatever, I don't really know. Also this year, I looked directly at my spotlight twice, and it almost blinded me. I saw a red circle for a few minutes, or seconds. So, dishonor mentions first. Uh, so, so the first two dishonor mentions are Rescue World Fallen Kingdom and Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, yeah, they were disappointing to me. I expected more from them because I liked the first two. Well, want a little bit more quality, I guess. Uh, the first Moon Tactic Beast is better than the first Jurassic World, or whatever, if you want quality. I don't know. <laughs> I liked it more. I know this was supposed to be quick mention, but there's not a lot of dumb stuff in first Moon Tactic Beast. There's a, lot of dumb, there's a lot of dumb stuff in the first Jurassic World, like, but I can't fun with it. Okay, the next two were, were, were pretty forgettable for me. It was The last two were pretty forgettable for me. Pacific Rim, Uprising, and Ready Player One. So these are movies that I forgot came out, and I just remembered them from looking at my list, because I wrote them down early on, and well, I kind of want to critique Ready Player One, because I don't think there's, like, I want to call it, like, I'm thinking about a title, like, do you remember Ready Player One, because, like, I don't think there's a lot of memorabilia from Ready Player One, because there's a lot of that Easter egg stuff, I think everyone remembers that, like, a lot of, like, that that character and that character, that's what that's the only reason why I want to like critique it a little bit or to see if you actually remember the story of it. And Pacific Uprising is just it really is just giant monster stuff. But there, I do enjoy my I did enjoy my theater experience because the the two guys in front of me when one of the giant robots like punched it through another giant robot. The dude in front of me high fived his friend when that happened. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Vet and Venom, it's just dumb and stupid and it's pointless. I kind of had a miserable time watching it. I, I do like when, uh, okay, I do like one thing, like how Venom was making fun of Eddie. That's the only thing I probably do like. But overall, it was just stupid. So, honorable mentions now. Uh, Deadpool 2 and Teen Titans Go to the movies, they were. They, uh, they were both funny. Oh, well, one was very violent. One was very humorous. Cargo, a zombie movie that's like not quite action packed and it's quite enjoyable. Aquaman, a very fun DC movie. Very visual to look at. Very nice to look at. Fun, like it should be like that. And Annihilation, a very interesting sci-fi movie or unique sci-fi movie. So let's begin our top ten. Now I'm taking this off. I look horrible. 
So before I begin, there's at least four coming of age stories on here, and one and uh, not, and also one I movie I bumped up like its score. Well, we'll see what it is in a few minutes, or you already know because of the thumbnail probably. So first is number ten, Bumblebee. Yeah, I I I like I said in my review, I think I might regret it first, but. Or not, I should have probably seen it multiple times before I make my final decision, but I just like like everything about it. I like the color tone, I like the music, I like that there's no Michael Bay involved. All good fun. What's not to like? What I mean about the color tone, I really mean about Bumblebee's color tone, about the, how the Transformers are, the Decepticons and Autobots. It's very bright and re I can't put my word, my tongue on, on a, what a word I can describe. Well, I think that's maybe jubilant as a word that I can describe it, like, very, like, it makes me feel happy a little bit. Like, I really enjoy everything. Well, I, I'm talking about the colors, but, like, I still like the story and, like, what it is, and, like, this is what it should, the, the, this is the right direction to go in. Like, this is how it should be. Number nine, search scene. Now, I thought this would be like a fail because it, the movie is recorded like with screen capture stuff as the recording of the movie of how, how it was executed with the story is actually good in the first few minutes of it. I can, I was actually pretty sad for these, for some of these characters, like how like, you saw their lives evolving like in the, like with their family photos or family videos in their computer and he told the story with through conversations in the computer with with her classmates and her father trying to find her and I didn't expect it to be good like usually you see something like this or you would think it's not good at all but I was really surprised by this and I liked it and oh main, mainly because of the story because of how what happened throughout story like you also with this movie you see like old like windows stuff and old YouTube as well which <laughs> I got surprised by now it's a good story but I do think if it was a regular like camera instead of using screen capture or whatever it would probably still be a good story but it was interesting to like just do it like this and I bet a lot of future movies are probably gonna copy this unless Oh, unless it already happened, like, I think, what was it called, um, Dark Web, Dark Web, uh, Internet, I don't know, Dark Web, I don't know, I, I, what was it called? I don't really care, but, you know, other movies are probably like capture this, but then they don't, they're just gonna, like, see that, and see that as a good thing, but not like a good story, but it was, the stir, the story was the good part of the movie. Not that it was a like, screen capture of of a computer or whatever. That was interesting, but the story was good. That's what I'm talking about. It's unique, I, I guess, in a way. So, number eight. Um, I don't know if I can allow, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but... Uh, Black, Cl Black Klansmen. Uh, uh, okay, so... so a police, a black officer, calls a, <laughs> oh, great, a KKK member to see if he can actually get in, but he disguises his voice to sound like a white person, and he uses Adam Driver to be him. And it's and it's pretty good, but like, there's a, there's, there's, my slight problem is like, uh, what's his name, Topher Grace. Uh, he just sounded like Eric Foreman for me, because he was like a, this big leader of the KKK. Uh, and I didn't, like, I, I didn't buy him as his, like, ruler, even though he was like this lame white guy. I just didn't, I just heard Eric Foreman. But Adam Driver's in this movie, and I, I didn't hear Kylo Ren. I just heard the character that Adam Driver was playing, this police officer. And it, it's funny, I like really like the dynamics of these characters, and it's, it's, it's good. Really good. If you haven't checked it out, you just go check it out. It's like maybe one of my best. Maybe it's one, it's one of my best like non-franchises movies. But we'll get to more in the other, other ones.
Number seven. Is that it? Um. Hey. Hey, seven. Number seven. Eighth grade. Which is not number eight. It's funny, huh? This movie takes place in our time, like 2018, but you still f feel the connection between a character that's, sh that's still shy and still feels out of place. Like plenty of us, I had that same experience when I was in that game, even though I didn't like anybody, but man, she does, okay, the character does a this a lot, like she talks a lot, like, well, she's a YouTuber, kind of, she's a YouTuber, but she, she's like, behind the screen, she just has, like, a lot of confidence, like, just talking to, like, the screen, like, saying what to do, but she doesn't really do her, she, but she doesn't really do stuff for herself. That's, you can see that in a lot of us, like, how we're all nervous and how we have imaginations about people and how want to be wanting to be cool and, and I think that's great and great experience for like I guess you can't well this movie is great at R and I guess you can't I guess you can show it to actual eighth graders to like see if that to build confidence a little bit between like the middle school is does suck a lot and just learn to be confident a little bit more and you'll get through it high school and eight, middle school and high school are just the most horrible stuff can happen. Just gotta live through it, I guess. And she just talked to herself about like what I could do. I do that still a lot. Uh, maybe I should stop and just talk to people instead of like pretending to talk to people. Number six, Quiet Place. Uh, Quiet Place was very, I think, very surprising by John Quin Quin John Kaczynski. Like, oh, it was one of the movies I thought was not going to be good. But, it, seeing some of the reviews, it's like, hey, maybe you want to check it out. And I did. <laughs> and I loved it. And I liked how it was quiet. No pun intended. But also, good. And very suspenseful with the creatures and, like, the characters of how, even though it's quiet, you can still tell what's happening. Like, And overall, very good. I like it was I like it was just quiet. But my first theory experience of it. Uh, there was somebody talking and just ignoring the hell out of me. Just be quiet during a movie. Number five, Into the Spider Verse. I kind of wish they did a movie critique of it, but I kind of like don't want to because I usually don't do critiques on cartoon animated movies. Even though this is really good movie, but I wouldn't say it's the best comic book movie of all time or all of the year. I don't see what you are saying. Maybe it's because it looks like an actual comic book that goes great with animation, but I wouldn't say it's the best comic book movie. There's a lot of like good other like cartoon movies that are probably comic book movies as well. But I would say it's the best looking comic book cartoon movie. You gotta judge it by story, even though it's a good story, but you gotta like see through it all of it. I, I like the animation. It's very unique. An abstract, and I like the story. I like Miles Morales. I like the Peter Parker in this. He's an old slug of a man, or former self of Peter Parker. Would I like to see Tom McGuire instead? Mm, maybe, but I still like I still like Jake Johnson. I wish they had Mary. I don't know who would voice Mary Jane, but I would I would not recognize if they did Zoe Deschanel. I would not recognize that her voice is very recognizable. It will please the new girl fan in me a little bit. They built a new animation style, I guess, in for this movie. That's why I've been hurrying. But yeah, it's good. Number four, Mid 90s by Jonah Hill, actually. He's written and directed it. And the aspiration ratio is not like our modern day. It looks like it came from the 90s, like on a VHS tape, whatever. And it's another good coming age story of like wanting to fit in. It's not like 8th grade, but this is, and it feels like the 90s. It's not forced. Also, I forgot to mention, Bumblebee doesn't force the 80s as well. Black, also, Black Clansman is also in the 70s, and also didn't force the 70s. There's a lot of good period piece movies that didn't force their period in onto us. Like, there's plenty of movies that do that, and it just doesn't work out for them. Also, there's a lot of, like, slang words that you use in, use in the 90s and the early 2000s that you probably wouldn't use today. Well, that will come off very offensive now. Well, overall, it's really good. Check it out if you haven't. If we made a list if, of like non sci fi, non franchise stuff, like this would probably be my number one, I think. Yeah, it, no, it will be because I'm 
the next few movies are very sci-fi-ish. So, number three, Black Panther. Black Panther is the Marvel movies in another, in another unique direction of, like, the Earth. In the Earth. That's, I think this is what Doctor Strange should have been. Like, Doctor Strange was in, in New York, but it was also still, like, in New York. <laughs> Even though it had, like, other things going on, but they should have done more in that area, like how in... They did Black Panther, like how what the Wakanda stuff, and there's a good villain. <laughs> like Killmonger is really good. I probably my favorite part of Black Panther is like when T'Challa is asking his advisor about like about his uncle and did he survive or whatever, and uh, he's asking his advisor says like I only answered the king, and he says T'Challa says I am the king. I that to, to me that was really powerful. I probably should have said that in my review, but or did I? I don't remember. It's been a while, but yeah, that thinking back, I'm I'm choosing weird scenes for my for my favorite scenes for Marvel movies. I don't choose like the big action sequences or whatever. I'm choosing like the small scale scenes that that probably feel more emotional in the characters, which you do feel for all these characters, and you should feel these for these characters, and this is why we like these movies, because of the characters, not because of the big action, even though the action's very cool, whatever, but it's, it's the characters that you like most likely, and the power that the actors send you these characters as well. So, number two, Anna and the Apocalypse. I had a blast with this movie! I really did! It's a zombie apocalypse musical Christmas movie. There's not that much Christmas music in here, actually. There's a lot of new, unique songs that that are really good. I was singing along almost like, more like humming it when the repeating verse came on. I, I just had the most extreme fun with this movie. Like, I was shockingly at, I just saw a Facebook ad from it, and I just really wanted to see it, and I, 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 I had a major blast. It's a good zombie movie overall, even though it's a it's, it's, it plays off of the comedy like a like a Shaun of the Dead, but it's also a really good it's also very fun like Shaun of the Dead like Shaun of the Dead is a good zombie movie but but it's not like a good good like this is how like I I don't want to say any spoilers but it's this is uh, if you haven't seen it yet it's it's, it's good like, should I compare it to The Last of Us I don't know if I should I had a good this is had a crazy third act. It, zombies are dancing like zombies are coming for Anne, but they're da they're almost like dancing while they're coming for her. It's kind of funny. I just had a major blast. If you haven't seen it, you should see it. But maybe when it comes out on DVD, this was shown at a film festival in 2017, and it should have got a release in 2017. But something like that doesn't work out, and it gets a year. Later, I think mid '90s also was shown in 2017 and got released in 2018. Some there that sometimes happens and it, it counts as a 2018 movie now because it was the wide release of it or the wide limited release of it came out in 2018. So it made my list for 2018. So my number one movie that I changed my rating of it when I first reviewed it because I saw some certain scenes that I liked and I had to bump it up because I didn't like them. Well, I liked them the first time, but I really liked them, like, the multiple times I watched it. That is Avengers Infinity War. I have this very contented feeling about the movie now than my previous showing. That it was just like, I felt at ease with it. And I, just really good. Kind of like The Last Jedi. I have that feeling too with that movie. Like, I really like the, the arguing between Doctor Strange and Tony Stark. A lot of people were predicting that they would be too similar, but I think the the Rooster Brothers and the writers changed some things about them because Doctor Strange and Star Lord doesn't feel like they're themselves in Infinity War. They feel like they're different characters. I also really like the Thor stuff. It made me feel sad a little bit more times. I watched it, and also I really like when everyone dies. I really feel like that exciting feeling it now. Like, ooh, they're all gonna die, and like, I get the chills, and they they're all gonna die, it's gonna happen, everyone dying, bye-bye, don't feel so good, ah, <laughs> and the villain wins, and has a nice, peaceful ending. Imagine if they just left it like that, say, this is the end of it, 
It's been a fine 10 years. Bye bye. Everyone's dead now. And this is also a villain center story. And the villain's really good. You, you see that he's like this Hitler kind of person that wants to wipe out everything and he thinks he's right. Which maybe he is right. Maybe we should just get rid of people because there's, there's not enough food in the world. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Who really knows? Genocide is the key to everything. No, it's not. People should live, but maybe he's also wrong too. No, the heroes should all die. It's exciting now. I really got the chills when everyone was dying, like, ooh. So the first time around, it was not ex chilling, it was more sad, but then, like, multiple times, they're like, ooh, they're gonna die. <laughs> so I really had a blast what my final watch of Infinity War, because like, one day I was just thinking about it, and I decided to put it on and just, like, have fun with it, or enjoy the story a little bit more. And I did. Who would have thought? Or never. I mean, people change their mind. Something happens a lot, and I I bump it up. But it's still behind. So since I did, I I bumped it up a little bit more. I so I bumped it up a little bit more. But I still have it behind Civil War. Like Civil War is still that really good movie of the Marvel movies of all the Marvel movies. Still, so we'll see how Avengers Endgame is. If it can pop, bump it up as well, or bump it, go in front of Civil War. We'll see what happens. But yeah, that's my top 10 list and also all my negative and honorable moments as well. So what is your top 10 list? Do you even have a top 10 list? Do you just watch movies to watch movies? Just to have fun with it? It's fine. Like that. You don't have to make a top 10 list to it. So please give me a comment down below, give me a like, and subscribe for more. I've been at the one and see you later movie goers. Have a happy new year.